Hello ladies and gentlemen, Michael23B here, and today I have something pretty interesting to show you. It's what I would call a signal strength memory array. So basically what it is, it's a bunch of comparator memory cells stacked on top of each other, and each one of these can hold a different unique uh, signal strength, and it basically acts as an array of values, of signal strength values that you can use um, for whatever you want. Um, you can use it for mini games. Um, can store, you know, a sequence of numbers, sequence of signal strength that you could use for maybe like a combination lock or um, different music discs that you could play or, or something. I'm sure you could figure something out if you're creative. Um, but yeah, it allows you to store a sequence of numbers in an array. So before I get too much into how this whole thing actually works, um, let me demonstrate just the basics of a comparator memory cell. In case you're not familiar with um, Redstone at all. Um, so this is a comparator memory cell. Basically it's just a loop that feeds into itself. So if I send power into it, now this comparator memory cell will always hold a value of 15. Um, and I also I have a texture pack that tells me what the, um, the signal strength is of each one, just to um, be convenient. So this will always hold a value of 15 unless I clear or, or break the signal. So now I've cleared the signal just by breaking the circuit. And so we can input different signal strengths into this comparator memory cell, and it will always hold that value until, um, until something else comes into it. So let's say I put 15, it will now be 15 because 15 is greater. Um, if I were to put, uh, this will be 12 going into that. It's, not going to do that because this hasn't been cleared yet so it's always going to be 15 um, until we actually break it and again we can put something else into it and put 13 so this will always have a value of 13 in it unless something greater comes into it now one way to um, clear the signal out of it is obviously to break the circuit but we can also send a signal into this comparator and if we put this into subtraction mode Basically what this does is that we're going to send a power signal of 15. We're going to send that into this comparator and this comparator is in subtraction mode. So it's going to subtract 13 and it's going to do, it's actually going to do 13 minus 15. And so that's going to be negative. Um, and essentially it'll always be zero. It returns everything to zero. So let's put that into the system. Um, that basically just sends everything to zero. It clears the signal out of the entire memory cell. And that's pretty much the basics of what a comparator memory cell is. So let's move on to over here. So this is actually one of our first arrays. And what I have here is a lectern. And this lectern has 15 pages in it. So we're able to get 15 different power signals from this uh, lectern, from whatever page this book is on. So let's say we're on page 10. We'll get a power signal of 10 from that lectern, but only once we uh, actually send it into the system. So I'm going to hit this button momentarily. And what this bo button does is that it releases this signal going into this comp into this repeater. Um, and it only releases it for one tick. So we're letting basically one tick of this comparator to get a signal from the lectern. So we're going to get a signal of 10. And so as I explained earlier, since we have 15 going into this comparator in subtraction mode, we're never going to get an output from this um, until we're not sending a signal into here anymore. So yeah, let's go ahead and hit the button. And you'll see the 10 propagates downwards into this last memory cell. And so basically the way this array works is that once there's a signal in a memory cell like this, um, that signal gets sent back and it basically um, gets sent back into this comparator and that prevents any new signal from coming in. So no lower signal, no higher signal can come into this um, comparator. So nothing can overwrite this memory cell because we're, um, we're detecting that this has power and we're sending that power and fully disabling this comparator, essentially. Um, now something else we're also doing is that this observer detects a change in that, and that basically clears the previous memory cell. So that allows us to basically propagate it downwards. 
um, propagate the signal. So let's send another signal in just for demonstration. Send a five. And we can also send let's send a 15. And you'll see we have 10, 5, and 15. So I can also hit the note block over here. And this will basically what basically what this will do is that we'll clear this. And once this um, memory cell is cleared, um, this comparator will unlock essentially um, because there's no more signal in our memory cell. And it'll allow these ones to propagate downwards. Um, and all the observers, so let's say that we got 15 into that memory cell, once that's clear, um, this observer will be able to clear the previous memory cell. That way, um, nothing stays behind, you know, that way we're cleaning up after ourselves. So let's hit the note block. You'll see the 10 clears out, and we have 5 and 15. I can hit it again. We've got 15. I can hit it again, and it completely clears it out. So, yeah. Now we also have another design here. Um, this is a little bit slower, honestly. And it's also, obviously, bigger and not as pretty. Um, and basically what this one does, it, it does the same exact thing, except that it only clears a previous memory cell um, if uh, one of these memory cells is off. Um, or, <laughs> or something like that. I'm not really a big fan of this one, but it does work um, more accurately, I guess you could say, because it only clears a previous memory cell um, when one of these, when, you know, the one ahead of it turns off. Whereas this one will clear a previous memory cell whenever it changes, whenever this gets, a, whenever this gets a signal or whenever it removes a signal. Um, but yeah, it still works. It still works with observers. It's just more accurate with this one, but this one is uh, slower and more chunky. So getting on to more of the main point of the vi video is this compact vertical array of comparator memory cells. And so essentially, instead of laying it out uh, horizontally, I've got these memory cells. So we're getting a signal again uh, from this lectern, we're sending it into this memory cell. And this memory cell propagates, or you know, it goes in a chain, goes downwards into the next memory cell, which is here. This memory cell feeds into this one, it goes into that one. That one goes into the next one, and it basically just propagates downwards. Um, and we also have a red line here that clears out the entire array if we wanted to. Um, so let me just demonstrate this one really quick. We have a signal of one, and this this page is on one. So let me add one, and you'll see that will propagate downwards to the end. It's at a signal strength of two. That will propagate downwards. You can see we have a one and a two. And we can go back to one. And then I'll also add, let's say we add a 15. Okay, you'll see the 15 propagate downwards. So we have one, two, one, and 15. And so we're doing the same thing as we were doing over there. We have a signal in this. Uh, memory cell and because we have a signal we're sending that signal back and locking the comparator from um, getting any new signals into it and so we're doing that on each layer and of course we're also doing our observer as well um, the observer is important to clear the last memory cell once we've loaded it in to the next one um, and so once we've cleared the last memory cell then the one before that can load into this one and so on and so forth until all of the memory cells have propagated downwards, essentially. But yeah, this is our vertical memory array. It makes it much more compact than doing it out in a line. And of course, just as with the last one, I can hit the memory, or I can hit this note block. It just sends a signal into that that clears that. Um, so I can do that. So previously we had 1, 2, 1, 15, but now we have 2, 1, 15. And I can do it again. We have 1, 15. And you know, I can clear it completely out. Let's grab these. And I'll actually demonstrate it again. 
And you see we have 15, 14, 13, 12. Um, and I can actually take any one of these out that I want to. So let's say, um, let's say that I want to take this 13 out. I'm just going to um, place a note block here. Just send a signal into that memory cell. So let's send a signal into that. And that will remove the 13. So now we instead of 14, 14, 15, 14, 13, 12, we have 15, 14, 12. Um, so yeah, and then we can also use the red line and clear that data. And that basically removes everything. It just clears all the memory cells. We also have just one little additional thing. Um, we have a yellow line here. And this yellow line tells us um, when the memory is full. Because when you add data, it actually goes into this first memory cell. If this first memory cell has like a signal in it, it should tell the lamp to turn on. However, um, I'm disabling the lamp just momentarily um, whenever we add the data. So if we're currently adding data, um, I disable the lamp from turning on. If this memory cell has a signal in it and we're not adding data, then it'll tell us that the memory is full. So that's essentially it for this one. And I'll have a world download for everything um, that you can look at this more closely. It's important that these are on uh, the second setting. That way, when we get a one tick pulse from the observer, um, we're able to actually clear it because only a one tick pulse won't actually clear the memory cell. So these are on two ticks. And yeah, it's just a whole chain of memory cells feeding into each other. So yeah, let's continue on to the next one. So basically, I've expanded on this one. This one is just a normal memory array. Um, I'm going to skip this one actually for now and we'll move to this one. So let's say that you had a memory array um, with a bunch of different signal strengths um, and you want to pop that data out and you can pop that data out like I showed you earlier. Um, it's a it's actually a first in first out system so everything gets popped out of the bottom. Um, but let's say that you wanted to pop stuff out without actually changing the data that's in the array. So what we would do is that we would add a second array that we load stuff into when we want to. Um, and the original array stays the same. So basically what I've done is I've taken the one from previously and I've added a second, um, a second whole stack of array of uh, comparator memory arrays to the left of it. Um, and that will be the array that we load stuff into. And so the original one stays the same. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'll demonstrate, I'll add, say this is on four. So you'll see a four, very vaguely, it'll propagate down to the end. And so each one of these arrays, you see four here, um, and nothing in here. So let's go back up, add a three, let's add a two add an 8, let's add a 7. Okay, so we should have 4, 3, 2, 8, 7. And we have nothing in the left array, so we only have stuff in the right array. So once we hit load data, it will basically just copy all the data in the right array to the left array. So now we have 4, 3, 2, 8, 7 on both sides. So this whole memory array has stuff in it. And we can even pop stuff out. And so now this has three, two, eight, seven. Can do it again. Hit the note block. Now this has two, eight, seven. Um, and then we can even unload it. And this will clear the whole um, left array. So we still have four, three, two, eight, seven on the right. So we could load it again. And it will load that memory array again can pop it out, can pop out two of them, so 287, and we can even load it again, and it will just overwrite what's already there um, with what was in our original memory array. Of course, as is with our previous one, we can also clear the data from our array. Um, so if we clear the data, that deletes it um, from our original memory array, and so our left memory array will still have the data that was copied to it, 
um, unless we unload the data. So we could unload the data and now we don't have anything. So we would have to enter a new sequence again. And so, yeah, essentially this whole thing works the same as the other memory array, except that I've added an, added an extension to the right. So each one of these um, memory cells, it does get a little bit complicated in here um, now that we have a second array. Um, but I'm basically taking an output from this memory cell and sending it into the left uh, memory array. So here's our second memory array with the pink blocks. So we have this looping on itself. Um, and basically we're not sending anything from our original array into our second array until this redstone line is unpowered. So, um, of course, again, because we're powering this with a, with a power of 15 into this comparator, which is in subtraction mode, nothing comes in here unless we depower, uh, this redstone repeater. And that's basically done by the purple line and the purple line basically gets deactivated when I'm wanting to load data. Um, and so that allows all the data, once this is unpowered, it allows all the data that's in the original memory array, it depowers this redstone repeater, it allows everything to flow into the second memory array, and this second memory array works just the same as the other one. Um, and it has a, a clear line and everything. Um, and of course we have an unload data here. Um, that works the same, it unloads, basically deletes all the data from that memory array by powering, you know, powering the comparators in subtraction mode, um, clearing all that out. Um, we're going to move on to our last and um, our final type of array here. So something you might think about, something you might not have thought about, um, about these previous ones, is that we can actually store any power signal from 1 to 15. We can um, store anything between that. However, we can't store a power signal of zero. Um, I don't know if there's anything you'd use a power signal of zero for, but in case you wanted to store zero, um, that would not be possible uh, with the current setup because a zero means that, hey, there's no data in our array. Um, so we're going to allow more data to flow into this memory cell because, hey, there's nothing in um, our memory cell here. So a zero acts as um, something telling the system that, hey, there's no data here. So what if we actually wanted to have zero as a bit that we could store in our array? That is where this whole system comes in. So what I've done here is that we have um, a memory array just the same um, as the one over there. It works exactly the same, except again, I've added a second memory array on the right. And so basically what we're going to do with this one is that we store our signal strengths in the left memory array, including zero. Um, but we use our right memory array to tell the system that, Hey, uh, there's a data bit here. So every time that we add a zero signal or whatever the signal is, um, we're always adding a new signal to our right memory array. So let's go ahead and I'll basically just demonstrate this one. So we're going to add a 10. We'll add a six. Um, and let's add a zero. And you'll see we have down here, we have a 10 and a six and nothing else. Um, Cause obviously you can't see where that zero is. Let's go ahead and add another data bit. So let's add a 15. We'll add that. And that propagates downwards. And that basically ends right here. So we have a 10, a 6, a 0, and a 15. So basically what our second memory array over here is doing is it's telling the system where our data bits are. So let's say, for example, where's our 0? We have a 0 here. And basically it's preventing any new data from entering this memory cell with a zero because our second memory array is telling the system that there's a bit here. So it's going to um, send a signal from this memory array into our other memory array. And basically that locks this bit from accepting any new data. So works just the same as an original, as our original memory array over there. 
except we have a second memory array telling um, telling the system where the bits are. We don't have anything on loaded data and unload data. Um, so we could remove those technically. Um, if you wanted to combine this with the loading data and unloading data, it would be possible, but it would be quite a bit more complicated um, because you have to tell, if you were to combine these two, you would have to tell um, the, the array that you're loading into um, where the zeros are as well. So it'd be, be kind of complicated. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going to focus on this so we can clear the data. And now there's nothing in it. We can add, say we wanted to add three zeros. We'll add second zero, a third zero. We can add a 15. You'll see that 15 propagate downwards. We have zero, 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 15. We got a 14. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up the entire array. And we'll add a six. I think that will be our memory full. And there we go, there's our light, it turns on. So all of our memory cells have data in them. So we have 0, 0, 0, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 0, 9, 8, 7, 6, or no, 7, 0, and 6. So just the same as the other ones, again, um, we can use the first in, first out method. We just pop one out, so we hit that. And so now we have 0, 0, 15, 14, 13, and so on. Um, we can do mm. it again. 0, 15, 14, 13, and so on. Mm. Hit it again. We have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and so on. So it's just propagating everything downwards. Um, so all the memory array is exactly the same. We're just popping one out of the end. And so... This works just the same. You send a signal by hitting the note block, it sends a one tick pulse into this, and it clears this uh, cell. Um, the only thing that is different about this memory array is that we're not taking a signal um, from the array itself. The only reason to take a signal from here is to tell if there's a bit here or not. So because we have another memory array that's telling us where the bits are, we don't have to take a signal from that. Um, so this whole array is telling us where the bits are, and it's locking those in place where they need to be, including the zeros. So yeah, that whole green line is basically just taking the data from over here um, and telling the other data, telling the other array that there's a data bit there. I know this is um, kind of complicated. I'm not really going to do like a tutorial on any of these, um, but once again, there is a world download. Um, but yeah, it is a pretty nifty idea that I just thought I'd share. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope you guys learned at least a little bit of something. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.